Okay, everybody, the first thing that we gotta do is see who's gonna poof away to make room for Gary the intern. Oh yeah, that's right. Last week we asked the viewers to vote on that, didn't we? Yep, we sure did. And my money is on the moron poofing away. <laughs> um, actually, I doubt that. The Barbarian seems to be a fan favorite, whereas many people dislike the rogues high-pitched, squeaky voice. Okay, so look, guys, there was, there was actually a problem with the voting. What? What sort of problem? Well, it looks like there was some tampering with the voting by a rival adventuring group and possibly some voter fraud. Wait! Voter fraud? Ah, yes. I bet droves of people were creating alternate YouTube accounts just to be able to vote more than once. Well, well, that makes sense. People do love Gary the Intern. Yes, Gary is quite adorable. Well, this sucks. How long is it going to take to get things sorted out? About four years. Holy crap. Well, perhaps we could use a random table to determine which player leaves to make room for Gary the Intern. Ooh, 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 ooh. A random table. Yeah, I, I love random tables. You, you love everything that you don't understand. Oh, yeah, sure thing. Here we go. Well, it, it says that Gary the Intern will replace the Barbarian. What? <laughs> no, that that's, that's not fair. You suck. <laughs> well, 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 I hate random tables, and I hate all of you! Welcome to the DM Lair. I'm Luke Hart, and I've been a Dungeon Master since high school. On this channel, I give practical Dungeon Master advice that you can use in your Dungeons & Dragons games. And today in the Lair, I'm going to be giving you 10 tips for using random tables in your D&D games. I personally use random tables quite a bit. I think they are pretty awesome and pretty cool. So just for the record. Now the most commonly used random tables are often random encounter tables and the treasure tables in the Dungeon Master Guide. Well, at least they are for me. But most of these tips apply to all the different types of random tables that are sprinkled throughout pretty much any D&D product you buy. But before we jump in, I wanna remind you that I publish lots of 100% free Dungeon Master resources over on my website, thedmlayer.com. For instance, you can find tons of free fifth edition adventures there to use in your games. And there are also also other cool resources such as new magic items, NPCs, and even random tables. You can also sign up to my newsletter if you want to receive a free D&D resources every single week by email. There's links to all of that down below. And now, 10 tips for using random tables in your D&D games. Number one, random encounter tables should not just list monsters. Have you ever seen the random encounter tables in most D&D resources such as Xanathar's Guide to Everything? They just have endless lists of monsters. That is not super helpful. What do the monsters want? Do they attack? Do they talk with the characters? Like, like what's going on here? When you create random encounter tables, you need to describe the situation and give some context, not just list bunches of monsters. So d don't just have an acolyte listed on the table. Instead, say an acolyte con artist wants to gamble with the adventurers. She's down on her luck and needs to pay for a mistake she made to gain entry back into her religious order. Don't just list 1d6 plus 2 goblins. Instead, say a band of 1d6 plus 2 goblins are looking for dead dragons to use their scales to make shields. The goblins are not hostile and ask the PCs if they have any leads. And have non-combat encounters. For more examples of how I do random encounters, see my RPG random encounter collection that I have published over on Drive-Thru RPG. G. Link below. It, it's free, by the way. Number two, use random encounter tables to restock dungeons. When the group decides to take a long rest during a dungeon, use random encounter tables to repopulate parts of those dungeons. Or when the group takes a short rest in a dungeon, use random encounter tables to have something attack them. There should be a chance of this happening whenever the group takes a short rest. Now, when I create an adventure, I also make a random encounter table customized for that adventure. It's designed specifically so that the creatures on that table table makes sense for the adventure and then I can use them during short rests or to repopulate and restock a dungeon if the group decides to go long rest and give the enemies time to recover. Number three, don't follow random tables blindly. <sighs> you were given a brain for a reason. If you roll something on a table and it doesn't seem good or won't fit with your adventure or game, don't use it. 
re-roll or customize that roll as needed. Treasure hoard tables in the Dungeon Master Guide are like this. I enjoy rolling on them, but I also customize treasure for my games. Let's say we're, run, we're rolling a random encounter and it turns out to be an adult red dragon for a level three group. Maybe you should roll again or at least make sure you have some context around that encounter and it's not designed to just be a combat encounter but instead is a social encounter. Number four, customize random tables for your game. Pre-made tables are great. I publish lots of random tables in my monthly patron PDF, for instance, but they can be made better when you customize them for your game and your group. For instance, you should consider customizing them for like the environments that your players are going to be in. If your players are on the plane of fire, most of the drinks might be warm and food is slightly charred. If they're on the plane of ice, drinks are slushies and the food is chilled. And you can customize these random tables for a specific campaign setting as well. Like if you're running in Eberron or Forgotten Realms, things might be distinct. Number five, use random tables to add variety and flavor to the mundane. There are parts of the game that you want to plan out with loving detail. That cool villain, the final boss fight, the awesome dungeon, the traps in it, etc. Some things though, you'd rather not have to plan. The tavern menu, for instance. Would it just be better to have a few random random tables with meals and types of drinks. And then you can just roll randomly to determine what any given tavern has on the menu, no matter where your players happen to go. I, I don't know, maybe some people love designing menus for their different taverns, I don't know. That is, that is not the part of the game that gets me excited though. You can have random tables for lots of mundane things in your game and it helps you add flavor to the world and makes it feel more real. Number six, use random tables as a spark, not the fire. Special shout out to Danny for coming up with that little catchy phrase there. Danny is my underpaid, overworked intern and she's doing great. The point here is that random tables were not designed to be used to run every aspect of your game. Random tables fill in the voids here and there. They help flesh things out, but they can also be used to inspire you and spark your creativity. For instance, you could take an adventure idea table and either roll on it or just pick an adventure that you like and then flesh that adventure out for your game. A random table of dungeon types and descriptions could be the spark that fuels your work to flesh out an entire dungeon for your game. If you have writer's block and just don't know what to do next or where to start, use random tables for inspiration to get your juices flowing. Number seven, use random tables to prep your game. I personally use random tables a whole lot more during game prep than I ever do while running the game itself. For instance, Appendix A, Random Dungeons, at the back of the Dungeon Master Guide is a great resource, but not for creating random dungeons, but instead for designing dungeons. I, I could randomly roll on the tables if I wanted to to design a dungeon, but that's not what I do. Instead, I look at the tables, I read the tables, and I use the information on them to inform my game design. For instance, if I'm designing a temple or a shrine, the table that lists the different purposes of rooms is super helpful and helps me decide which rooms to include in my temple. And you could roll on the tables to decide the furniture furnishing and other content of rooms too. I, I've done that before. Sometimes thinking and being creative is kind of hard and rolling on random tables can help ease the workload some. Number eight, use random tables to challenge your role playing and game design. One thing that I enjoy doing when I create characters that I'm going to play is randomly rolling the character traits, ideals, bonds, and flaws. Then I stretch myself to role play the character that way Instead of just playing my standard thing and just just being Luke, which is which is an interesting character, arguably. No, okay, just, just keep going. <laughs> this prevents me from just making a character that is myself or some ideal of the perfect PC I have or a copy of a superhero or someone for a, from a book or a movie. And, and here's the thing, you can do that as a dungeon master too. You can roll elements of the game randomly during your game prep and then force yourself to use those constraints as you design your game. Many times this will help you develop something different than you usually do. And that variety is probably going to be something your players will enjoy. It's different from the usual thing that they get to do. Number nine, instead of rolling, pick what you want. 
I, I know their tables and you can roll dice and decide but then the dice tell you which elements to use. But don't forget that you have a brain and you also have personal preferences. There is there is nothing wrong with simply reading a random table and then picking the element from it that you want to use. Number 10, don't get carried away. Okay, random tables are great, but if you're spending a good chunk of your game sessions just rolling on tables, something might be wrong. They are a great tool to be used before the game and during the game, but don't overdo it. There are some things that shouldn't be left to chance and too much rolling on random tables during a game is probably gonna get old pretty fast. Don't forget to sign up for my newsletter at the link below to get a free D&D resource every week in your email. If you thought the information in this video was okay-ish, give me a thumbs up and leave a comment for the algorithm down below. Let YouTube know that I don't completely suck. Next week, I'll be releasing another video about D&D just like I always do, but until then, click right here to binge on my DMing 101 playlist. And until next time, let's, let's play D&D!